Joe's Motor Pool, Spartan Horn. <laughs> And there he goes again, that Scott Schiller tooting his own horn for Ron Fitzpatrick G Parts and Team G503 here on YouTube. I know, I know. Anyways, in this video, we'll be installing the Reproduction Spartan Horn by Joe's Motor Pool. This is a fantastically made unit. And as you see in the video here, I'm gonna install this. And when I hit that little button, it's gonna go beep, beep, beep. And it's got the correct sound. It's absolutely fantastic. These are also very reasonably uh, priced. You can purchase these at Ron Fitzpatrick G Parts and Joe's Motor Pool there in the UK, and you will not be disappointed. All right, let's dig right in here to the wiring. We're getting along in the wiring here, so this is going to be another one notched up on the Electric Part Series videos. Let's check it out. Let's start by assembling our horn vibration bracket, or sometimes called a vibration damper bracket. It's part number A1389, and notice there's four stamped metal pieces here with holes in them. One of them is slightly different because it's got a piece of material that's been tacked to the back, which makes it a little thicker, and that has a very specific location to go to on the bracket. We've got these two machined pieces here. They're washers, but they've got little ends on them there. They're going to go into those slots or holes there on those metal pieces, and they're going to hold those exactly in place when we install them on the horn. We'll turn over the Spartan horn here and you'll notice these two studs that are a little longer than the rest of them. We're going to connect our bracket to there. First we're going to take one of the plates, I'll call them, that does not have that larger piece and we'll just slip it over those two studs that come out. You don't have to worry for the time being about it moving back and forth. That washer that I showed you, that special washer with that raised surface is going to hold that in place once we get these installed. So there's two pieces that go on the horn first and then we'll take the little washer and we'll slip that little sleeve into the slots there on the hold to kind of keep that all together and lined up and secure on the back side there. Once we get those on, we'll be applying the third plate, I'll call it, that doesn't have the piece that's attached to the back, and that goes on there just like that. We'll push that onto those little raised areas there on the washer. The last piece that will go on is going to be that piece with that piece of material I showed you in the beginning put on, and that piece of metal is going to face away from the back side of the horn. We'll get all these plates locked in place. It takes a little manipulation to get them in there, but all you got to really do is line up all four of the holes and then snap them into those raised surfaces on that specially milled washer. The next step is going to be to install the lock washers and the nuts that are onto the studs. Just make sure that everything is in place and that the plates are inside or locked into that sleeve before you install your fasteners. Once I install the lock washers and the nuts, I'm going to just tighten them down to the point where it holds everything in place so nothing can jump out of order because I'm going to want a little play in between that bracket there when I mount it to the main bracket that's already fastened to the body tub. While I'm installing these fasteners, I, I want to share some interesting things that I found in doing research for this video. There's a couple of answers out there exactly what the horn vibration bracket does for the horn. And the most popular one, and I think makes the most sense, is, is that it's in place there because if that horn, when you beep the horn, if it was attached to a sturdy bracket without that damper inside, uh, between the two, then you would have vibration that would go through the entire side of the Jeep out of there, which would probably an annoy you and be loud. The other one that I found that I make sense to me also is, is that bracket is also put in place there to enable and achieve optimal decibels when you push the button there and the horn sounds, and that one makes sense to me too. I also found a third one, which I don't well, I shouldn't say I don't agree with, but I couldn't find any credibility to. Somebody out there said that there was the reason that was there was because the horn system itself is is activated by pushing the button, which grounds the system. They said that that little bracket that's in between there, the vibration bracket there, is made out of a material that does not ground or conduct electricity. Now, this is where I don't agree with, although there was quite the hefty conversation in one of the threads about that. So, if you indeed can show me or prove to me and the rest of the gang that watches the videos here that that has something to do with the electrical ground, I would really appreciate you showing that to me. I think that I'm going to go with the first two uh, things that I found there and other people have shared with me about it not allowing the vibration to go through the tub of the body when the horn is sounded and also to achieve optimal decibels when you sound the horn. Okay, so I've got the two nuts there and the lock washers all snugged up and notice here that those fit really well together. It's really a nice kit and we're going to be installing that area onto the bracket that's already mounted to the tub. 
A ways back now, we installed the main bracket there that goes to the firewall there on the tub. And I was lucky and fortunate enough to find some of these recessed bolts, and I was kind of enthralled with them because they have the initial S on there. So I cleaned these all up, and I polished them, and I put a little bit of clear on there just so you could see the SS. So that would be for Scott Schiller, just a little personal touch. I believe these bolts came off of a GPW. Maybe I can prove it. Maybe I can't. If you know where those bolts came from, please say so in the comments because I kind of find it comical. The bolt sizes are quarter 20 by half inch, and I've got a star washer installed, and they're also, they thread into that main bracket that's there on the firewalls. I'll show you here in a second. Okay, so what we're going to do now is make sure our wires are out of the way when we put this in. We don't want to pinch anything in there, and right there in that slot, we're going to slip that curvature of that main bracket right onto there, and then we're going to install the bolts from the front. So we've got everything lined up there in the holes on that main bracket to the firewall. And then the threads are actually installed or they're cut into that little plate of material that I keep talking about there that's on that last bracket, the one that's facing away, and the two bolts thread into there. I'm just going to hand tight them for the time being, make sure I can keep everything lined up. This can be a little tricky. I know it seems simple here when you watch it in the video, but kind of holding those things all together there and then getting everything lined up to get your bolts installed. Once you get them hand threaded, we'll just go back with a wrench and we'll snug them all down. Now, as I'm tightening these down here, and I'm, I know someone's going to notice, they're going to say, you know, why do you have the star washer there in between the bracket? The only reason I use that internal external star washer is because those, I like to have those on there. I enjoy those. And the ones that I took off originally were actually cracked and distorted. So I just went back with a more modern one. It has nothing to do with the fact of that horn unit being grounded to that bracket, unless you can prove me otherwise. Again, like I said in the video, I did see out there in Webland discussing about these old Jeeps that that perhaps is a reason to have the bracket in there is to not ground it to the body. Okay, so now we've got everything hooked up. I'm going to go back here and remove the tape that I put on the contact studs before I painted it. I did paint this horn to match the rest of the black that I've got on the crossover tubes in the horn that's on the engine. The short wire, that's part number A5081, they're both red with black tracers. That is connected to that junction block there on the post that's closest to the side of the passenger side. We put that in, installed that in, in a previous video when we were doing the junction block there. I'm going to put that here on the bottom stud there on the horn just because it's. I don't want to cross the two wires over. This both is part of the same circuit and you're just allowing positive power to flow through the horn. The other wire comes from the main wiring harness we installed in a previous video and we're just going to connect it to the opposite side. You can see how I have those two wires separated and I, when I say cross them, I did not cross them just because it's more aesthetically appealing the way I have it installed. Then I'll install the internal external star washer and the nut on the back side of those and I'll keep the wires straight and then tighten those down. After I'm done tightening everything down, I'll go back and just make sure all my fasteners are secure. Before we finish up with the wiring segment, just to be clear on this again, the wire that goes into this main harness we installed way back when we first started the beginning of the electrical videos, and that gets its power from the ammeter, which also passes through a circuit breaker, which is underneath the dash. And again, that's a few videos back, but that is included in the series. And here's the small one that's connected to that junction block there, just so we can be really clear about the wiring. Okay, we're gonna give it a try here. Just, I've got to power all up. Okay, we're going to give it a go here. I've got it all powered up. Now, I guarantee you, I almost guarantee you that my lab is going to bark in the inside. He does not like the sound of this horn in the garage, but let's just give it a go. And there you have it. Horn works. Sounds great. That's the end of the install. Hope you enjoyed the video. He may not have barked, which surprised me, but he's in here with a look on his face, so I don't know. What do you think, Rem? You like the horn or not? I'll take that as a yes. I like that meep, meep, meep goes the Jeep. Or they can say peep, peep, peep goes the Jeep. Or you can say beep, beep. Ah, anyway, you heard how it sounds. It's fantastic. Absolutely love it. Again, very reasonably priced. Check them out. They are for sale at Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts and at Joe's Motor Pool there in the UK. You will not be disappointed with this horn. We try to bring our best to you all the time. Try to bring the best quality products we can to you at the most affordable prices. I think a lot of you know that already if you're following this, this video series on YouTube. Anyway, I will stop tooting my horn till next time for the time being. And if you'd like to follow along what we're doing, you can do so by clicking that subscribe button. Click that little bell there on the bottom. You will get notified the next time I come out running my face. <laughs> I don't know, I'm in a mood today. Anyways, till next time, my friends, keep it safe and happy jeeping. Happy beeping. How about that? See you next time.